everyone, and welcome to another episode of Kenco Fishing. Today's episode is about pigments. Pigments that are used to color everything in the world. Now, keep that in mind for a second. As we delve into the subject on pigments, I want you to consider that pigments have been used for thousands of years, all the way back to ancient Egyptian times. So it's important to note that right away, pigments are a global thing that people are using for coloring everything under the sun. So the question comes up all the time, what are pigments and can I use them to make plastics? Well, yes, you can use them to make plastics. So let's start from the kind of the beginning. What is a pigment? So a pigment is a material that has a color based on its reflective and transmission of light wavelengths. So that's how pigment obtains its color. There are all kinds of different pigments out there now. There's natural, synthetic, there's just a massive realm of pigments out there. And it's important to know that not all pigments are created equal. So let's start with that. So let's start with, there's your basic synthetic stuff that's that is produced and there's natural stuff that's found in the earth um so years and years and thousands of years ago they used like iron oxides and you know all kinds of other natural elements in the earth to color things of course now we're we're advanced and we're you know we're 10,000 years down the road so now we have synthetic material that works very well so one of the things that is important about a pigment is that it has the ability to tint something. If it can't do that, then it, it's really not a useful pigment. So for instance, when you put your, your colorant, let's just say you're using something like this, this is a pigment in a carrier solution. So, and I'll explain that in just a second. So pigments have the ability to give off a color by the transmission and absorption of wavelength, light wavelength in particular. So looking at our Carolina pumpkin here from Lua Works, you can see that we have some clear liquid in the top of that. That's the carrier solution. The pigment has settled out. So what's important to know is that a pigment does not or is not water soluble or not soluble in its carrier solution. So when you have a pigment in a solution, it's going to settle out like it has here over time. It will stay suspended for some length of time depending on the carrier solution, but like for, for instance, if you buy paint in the store, it requires a mixing because the pigment in the carrier solution has had time to settle as it sits on the shelf. So the pigment itself is in the carrier or binder in the paint. So that pigment stays in the in that binder solution as you put it on the wall. Same with your color, your colorants, as that as you mix them up, put them in your plastic, it's not soluble in the plastic. So that's part of why your basic colorants don't bleed, because these are not soluble in the carrier solution. So once that gets in your plastic and it hardens or, or cures, whatever the case may be, that pigment is trapped in that, in that material, so it won't come out. Now there are such instances where you have pigments that fade over time or fade in sunlight, and that's called the fugitive. It's called a fugitive pigment. So those are pigments that fade over time and can eventually just turn black. Um, it's probably fine if you're not having something in the sunlight, but if you're having, you know, if you're painting a car that's going to be in the sunlight, you probably don't want to use those particular pigments. So with that said, it's, um, we should know that pigments are like a fine powder that are put into a carrier solution and are not soluble. Now, on the other hand, there's a lot of question about dyes. Dyes are a solution that are soluble in the carrier or they're the solution themselves. So when you put a dye into something, and we'll talk bait specifically, as the oils and as the, the moisture in that bait comes out, it causes bleeding. So that color, because it's a solution, is 
insoluble in that liquid, it can come out. It can bleed out as your bait loses moisture, as, it, as the oils start to ooze out. So that's when you get the bleeding effect, and that's what causes it. Now, with the colorants, with the pigments, you don't have that because they're non-soluble and they're trapped in the plastic. So that's kind of the two differences between your pigments and your dyes. Now, keep in mind that just because that's the general consensus, it's not a 100% of the time rule. Some pigments could bleed and some dyes might not, but typically that's how it works. So one of the other things, I really was hoping to show you some pigments and, and kind of show you what they look like, but I don't have any here in the shop in their, in their raw form. Um, I did have a handful, I threw them out honestly. I find them difficult to work with, inconsistent, and, and kind of a pain in the ass really. But there are a lot of guys out there using them, a lot of guys having great results with them, and I've had great results with them. I just, I find that the pre-manufactured colors are just so much closer to what I want that I don't have to mess with all these other items. Again, that's, if you like to tinker and play and mess around with different things, you know, you can get pigments online fairly inexpensively. Um, you can also put them in a carrier solution, you know, in your worm oil um, or in your softener or whatever. Um, if, if you were going to do that, I would recommend worm oil. But you, you can certainly put them in your own carrier solution and make your own colors. It's, it's, um, it's consistency is what is going to be problematic. So it's also good to know that the appearance of a pigment is based on its light source. So if you see a pigment under you know incandescent light, like we have above us, it's going to appear differently than, say, sunlight. Sunlight has a very warm color temperature, and so colors change based on where they're being viewed and the light they're being viewed under. So keep that in mind. Something you make might not look the same outside as it does inside, unless you're using a, um, a light that is most closely related to sunlight. Um, in fact, in most lab tests, they, they make you specify what light you're under, um, just be, for that reason, because colors can change dramatically under the different conditions. So, I think that's it for pigments. I hope that was helpful for you. The, the bottom line answer is yes, you can use them in soft plastic bait making. It's not a problem. Um, but remember that they don't always mix up well and they can be somewhat finicky to work with and consistency can be problematic. But you can definitely use them. Uh, so get yourself some if you want to give it a shot. I know there's places on eBay that sell packs of them for six or eight or 10 bucks or something like that. Um, and you can get a good color spectrum. So give them a shot. Um, I, I, like I said, I don't use them all that much anymore because I, the, the pre-manufactured colors just make more sense for me. Um, but if you're one of those do-it-yourselfers and you like to mess around with that stuff, you can definitely use them. Uh, so thanks for watching, and we hope to see you on another episode coming up. Have a great day.